Yeah, 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 no, yeah, no, homie. Yeah, you niggas gotta go to jail, homie. Yeah, no. Yeah, T.I. Look. Jeepers Creepers, what really happened is scarier than the movie by Mr. Nightmare Files. <laughs> Ah, my nigga. Jeeper, Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers, where's my water, my nigga? Hey, I bombed that intro. I'm not doing it over, though. It's cold as hell. It's snowing like a motherfucker. What's good? How you day going? Morning, evening, night, whenever you watch this video. We're about to check out Jeepers Creepers. What really happened is scarier than the movie by Nightmare Files. But look, though, regardless, though, just to kick a little bit of ish, then we're going to get uh, to the movie. To the show. To the show. Fuck. Ah! Hey, ain't no intro today, dog. You go to somebody else's video if you mad. I don't give a damn. This shit pissed me off today. I'm going go ahead. It's probably just damn red. One, one, day, one day this YouTube shit gonna take off and I'm gonna be blowing exotic behind this bitch. Watch. <laughs> Thursday, March 21st, 1991. A man led police on a high-speed chase in Louisiana going into Mississippi. What the police didn't know at the time was the man that they were chasing was Dennis DePew, a man who had been recently featured on America's Most Wanted for killing his wife in Michigan and mm -hmm. fleeing the state. His case was also the inspiration behind the 2001 horror movie, Jeepers Creepers. That song's so creepy, dog. Dennis had been married to Marilyn DePew for 18 years. They were a normal family, both had good careers. He was a property assessor and she was a high school counselor. Marilyn claims that after the children were born, he became distant. And he said that she turned the kids against him. Marilyn wanted to raise the family on her own. So in 1989, they divorced. And Marilyn was left with the custody of her three children but Dennis was given permission to make bi-weekly visits. Although Marilyn and her children were reluctant to spend time with Dennis. There was a time when Marilyn changed the locks because she didn't want Dennis having access to the main house. So one day she came home and Dennis was sitting on the couch in her house. After that, it happened a few more times. She never knew how he got in. But one day, Dennis randomly mentioned to a coworker that he was thinking about killing himself and someone else, but he didn't say who he was thinking about killing. So on April 15th, 1990, Dennis went to Marilyn's house to pick up two of their children. However, the children had refused to go with him, which made him quite angry. When Marilyn tried to talk to him, he started yelling at her. He grabbed her and threw her down the stairs. Oh, damn. After that, Marilyn was knocked unconscious. So Dennis grabbed her and told the children that he would take her to the hospital. The oldest daughter, Jennifer, ran to the neighbor's house to call the police. Dennis and Marilyn never made it to the hospital. Later on, Ray and Marie Thornton were on the road when a high-speed truck passed them. On the road, Ray and Marie always played a game with pronouncing license plate numbers. They noticed the license plate started with G, Z. So they said, geez, he must be in a hurry. But they didn't pay much attention until a few minutes later when they passed an abandoned school and saw the van was parked there. And as they were driving past, they saw the man behind the school with a bloody white shirt. A few minutes later, they saw that same van was following them. So Ray turned into another road and the van stopped on the side of the road. Then they turned to see if they could see the full license plate so they could write it down for the police and they saw the guy was changing his license plate. He also had the passenger door open, but the passenger door was covered in blood. Damn. After that, they returned to the abandoned school and found a bloody blanket and shirt. After that, they called the police. After the police arrived, they found fresh tire tracks and pools of blood. The tracks matched his van, and it was discovered that the van belonged to Dennis and that he had murdered Marilyn, shooting her in the head and hiding her body just off the road between her home in that abandoned school where he was seen. So Dennis fled. Though later, Dennis would start writing letters. He wrote 17 of them to his friends and family in an attempt to justify her death. 
The letters were postmarked in Virginia, Iowa, and Oklahoma. One letter in specific said, Marilyn had many opportunities to treat me fairly during this divorce. She chose to string it out, trick me, lie to me. When you lose your wife, children, and home, there's not much left, and I was too old to start over. That was the last that anybody heard from Dennis. But on March 21st, 1991... I was just about to say, wait, 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 Dennis, but what? I thought it was going off. I was about to say, well, what's the connection to the Jeepers Creepers movie? Because I, I, and I'm sure it's going to get there, my bad. I just thought it was going off, dog. Shit, I ain't going to lie, and I can tell. Shit, I ain't going to lie. And a lot of people go by the whole, yo, I don't judge off of looks. I go off of your personality. Shit. I told you, boy, I stereotype and judge. I'm sorry. This nigga look a little out of there. Kind of look like Jeeper Creeper a little bit. No, I think Jeeper Creeper a little more. He a little more handsome. I went back. Marilyn had many opportunities to treat me fairly during this divorce. She chose to string it out, trick me, lie to me. When you lose your wife, children, and home, there's not much left. And I was too old to start over. That was the last that anybody heard from Dennis. But on March 21st, 1991, Dennis had already changed his name to Hank Queen and was watching the show Unsolved Mysteries and noticed that he was featured on the show. As he was watching the show, he began to gather some of his belongings and packing his clothes so that he could leave. When doing so, his girlfriend Mary got home from work and she walked in. She can watch that shit. As she walked in, he asked her to make him a sandwich for the road. So he kept her in the kitchen while he continued to watch the show and continued to pack his belongings. His girlfriend said that he left in a hurry and told her that he had to visit his mother who was sick. Later, a friend of Mary's gave the license plate number of Dennis's van to the police because she saw Dennis on Unsolved Mysteries. After a few hours, Dennis was found to be in Louisiana crossing the border into Mississippi, prompting the police to start a chase. As the police pursued Dennis, they shot out his back tires. Dennis then stopped the van. I mean, you are in the, the van, police. you ain't gonna get that far. Then finally, turning the gun on himself. After that, nothing came of what happened. This was the true story behind the movie, Jeepers Creepers. I like that 90s feel. We gonna do this for how long? I am not about to watch that nigga for what? Four more minutes? Yo, I like how retro you are. Hey, that's fire, dog. I definitely feel like I was like in the 90s watching some shit on VHS. But regardless, though, what the fuck that has to do with Jeepers Creepers? Let me see. All right, all right so I guess this is where I'm going uh, to lose my horror card at this point because I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not really seeing the connection. It was one thing I heard in the story that made, unless something went over my head, that I was like, okay, that definitely seems like the movie Jeepers Creepers. I'm not, I'm not getting what make what would make someone know about this story and then get the Jeepers Creepers movie. The only thing I heard that was con that was like a connection, at least to me, was the freaking um when they were driving, because just like in a movie when they were driving, they were coming, I think, from spring break or some shit, whatever, and that truck kind of. My room almost run them off the road so they like what the f kind of similar in this situation so of course they started being a little more nosy started investigating more like let's see what's going on that happened here as well same that happened in the movie but except it was that ugly truck in the movie and then this one it was a damn van so they see him look like well was hide what you say hiding her body dumping her burying her body basically whatever and then in the movie it was down the was it like a well or some ish don't remember exactly dog but then as the kid fall down there and see like yo it's hella bodies down here so i was like besides the it, no i didn't even get that far far as the connect far as the connection but it basically worked into that scene my bad i just kept going but regardless though i'm like all right besides that part i was like yeah okay i see that and i right, shit i don't know what after that dog but yo regardless i'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here man go ahead and enjoy your day morning evening night definitely rest in peace to the ones who fell victim to dog it's not like it was just his family damn and only the daughter got away two minutes so she just she grew up knowing this shit uh fuck damn that just hit me right at the end i can easily build up to someone having survivor's guilt dog i'm about to go ahead and get up out of here what the fuck yo go ahead and enjoy your day morning evening night whenever you watch this video dog but i'm out